Hi everybody, this is Simon. Uh, welcome to this presentation, Customer Data 101. So what this session is going to be about is really um, starting to explore this area around personal information and why it's important to a business that you might be starting or some other project that you might be working on. Now this is a topic which is really close to my heart. Uh, I'm a bit of a geek and so I really love kind of messing around with uh, kind of obtaining data and structuring it and that kind of stuff. But uh, fortunately for you guys, uh, I've done the work and I've boiled uh, what you need to know down into this short presentation. Now the aim of this session are the things you should be comfortable with by the end of it. Uh, uh, firstly, being comfortable with the general concept and knowing why it's important. Uh, secondly, we're going to look at the kind of data that you want to be collecting from people. Um, thirdly, um, we're going to explore or you'll have an understanding of some online and offline techniques you can use for capturing data. And finally, we'll have a look at a couple of different ways you can start using the information that you've got at your disposal. Now, before we start, I just want to talk a little bit about the word customers. So um, if you're starting a business, well, then the customers are going to be the most important person for you. Um, that is people who are currently buying your goods or services or potential customers, people who may one day buy them. Um, if you're involved with a social enterprise or a community project, then there may well be other types of people that are going to be important to your venture. They could be a user of your service. They could be a beneficiary, so somebody who's receiving the benefit of it but doesn't directly pay for it. Or it might be some other supporter, so people who uh, you know, believe in what you're doing or just want to know more about it. Uh, now, for the purposes of this presentation, we're going to use the word customer as an umbrella phrase that refers to all of these people. So why is this important? Um, you know, really the starting point for this is that you know, if you haven't got customers and you haven't got a business or if you don't have users or beneficiaries or customers and you don't have a social enterprise and so being able to you know, find and engage people is fundamentally important to the success of any venture. Unfortunately, you know, there's never been more competition for people's limited time, attention and money. So the explosion of mobile and everybody having a device in their hand means there's so many more distractions nowadays than there once were. To put this in perspective, it's forecast that there's going to be $540 billion spent on advertising in 2015. Now that's an absolutely staggering amount of money and I, mean, I don't know any of you personally but my suspicion is that none of you are going to have you know, really significant budgets that you can go out to kind of engage and convert customers. Now what that means though is that you need to start learning to be a lot more creative um, and savvy about how you go about converting or engaging and converting customers. What this means then is that like the mindset that you need to approach all of this with is that you know whenever you have any kind of engagement with a, a customer, and it might be indirectly through somebody landing on your website, or it may be face to face, somebody coming along to an event of yours, you need to approach all of these interactions from the perspective that they should never happen without the opportunity to capture some information from those people. And the reason this is important is because if somebody's on your website or they're at an event being run by you or whatever it might be, it means that they're interested. And so if we can capture some information from them, such as their name and their email address, maybe their phone number, whatever, it means that we can continue to speak to that person and then convert them into a customer or market things that are of interest to them or make them a champion of ours. And so it's fundamentally important that Whenever we have these opportunities, we're giving them the opportunity to provide us with some of their information. So then, what, what data do we want to capture from these people? And so really, you know, it depends on how you plan to use it. So you know, the way in which you want to engage with your customers is going to determine the type of information that you need to gather from them. So you know, if you're, I mean, I guess the most obvious starting point for any of this stuff is sort of online communications. It might be an email newsletter, um, in which case, you know, the obvious things you'll be seeking from them are, you know, their name and their email address. Um, if you want to use some sort of postal or sort of print-based newsletter, then obviously, you know, you need to gather their name and their address. So it's really straightforward and the kind of information you'll need is going to be informed by, you know, the approach that you want to use to communicate with these with your customers. 
one thing to be mindful of here is that you know um, you know you only get a certain amount of time and attention from anybody that you try and obtain information from in this way, whether it's getting them to fill an, out an online form or fill out a paper form when they're face to face with you. So be careful about asking for information that you might really need. So finding out what their age is or you know asking them about their interests or that kind of stuff. So how can we start capturing this information? By far the easiest way that you can do this is by doing this online, typically using an online form. The reason this is the most attractive way is that you get the customer to do the data entry for you. Uh, it also means that you don't need to try and decipher their handwriting or something like that. Now some of you might be thinking like, oh my god, I've got no IT skills, I can't build a website, you know, the prospect of me building an online form is pretty remote. Um, the great news is that you don't need to have any technical skills whatsoever. There are a number of great services, uh, most of them can be used to a certain extent for free. Um, one is called Wufu uh, and another is called Typeform. Now in one of the videos I'm going to be releasing in the coming days, uh, I'm going to walk you through how to build an online form using Wufu and uh, start capturing information using it. Now you've all probably filled out hundreds of online forms before. Uh, I just wanted to point out this one example. So it's a form to join the MIT newsletter. It's super simple. Um, two fields at the beginning, just a name and email address. Um, the interesting part of this form is just the second bit where um, they ask for the people subscribing to kind of tell them what they're most interested in. Now the reason they do this is just to make sure that you know people are getting the information which they're most interested in receiving, which means they're less likely to unsubscribe and you know more likely to engage with the content. And so this is an approach that you can consider when you're building your own online forms. So if you don't have a website or you're often finding yourself in situations where you're face to face with customers, then it doesn't mean that you can't sort of capture information. There are just different ways you can go about doing it. So one approach, and uh, this is really the preferred approach, is to try and uh, build an online form and then collect information using you know, an iPad or a tablet or something similar. And again, this is attractive because it gets the user to do the data entry. Um, you don't need to try and you know um, understand what's scribbled on a piece of paper or something like that. That said, you know if you don't have access to that technology, um, then you know by all means a pen and paper. You know it's super simple. Um, you know it does require you to do a bit of data entry afterwards, but it's far preferable to not collecting any information from people. Another approach you can use if you are kind of working in an offline way, instead of getting people to record their details on a piece of paper. Um, could be to um, ask for business cards. So you can have a bowl where people drop their details in and you can simply collect the cards and then do the data entry later. Clearly this is a, a nicer way you've got printed details on a card rather than having to try and understand the handwriting of people as they fill out the form. Um, the importance of incentive. So this is a you know a really important thing to consider when you're sort of doing anything online. So you know people's information is valuable, and when we're asking them for it, we're effectively you know trying to buy it from them. So I like to uh, think about well you know what's your carrot? What is the incentive for somebody to give you their details? And so you know if you've been around online, you'll see that there's often um, incentives or prompts for people to join newsletters so it might be keep up to date with the latest information or be the first to know about something. Um, businesses often offer access to sales and exclusive discounts. Um, download our ebook so uh, it's all about kind of knowing you know what your users, what your customers might value and trying to you know build that into the process for obtaining their information. An approach that I've often used in the past um, is by, you know, for the programs and events that we run, uh, we build um, a kind of a really detailed information pack, and we, so it's basically just a PDF, kind of like an ebook, I suppose. And so when we promote our competitions, we put enough information online to get people interested, but to sort of obtain the really detailed information, including tips on how to prepare a really uh, uh, well put together application, 
then they need to download the information pack. They provide us with their name, they provide us with their email address, they tell us if they're a student or a graduate, they submit the form and they're emailed a link to download the information pack. So it's a really clear example of providing an incentive or a carrot, if you like, for somebody to provide some information. So collecting information is all well and good, but I mean, for it to be useful, it really needs to be kind of stored and structured. And so the way you do this is in a database. Um, you know, all of you will be familiar with that phrase, I'm sure. Really, it's just a fancy word for a spreadsheet. Now, you can do this in Excel. You can do it in Google Docs. There's lots of different ways you can do it. Um, but for it to be useful, it does need to be stored in a, in a, in a, uh, in a table form like this. The great thing is that if you're collecting data online using um, Wufu or one of the other services that I've mentioned, then you know you can really easily uh, just download the data and it's already in the right format. Once you've got it in a in a spreadsheet or a Google document, then it's really simple to use it as a for a mail merge, which is uh, something you can do to send um, a large number of personalized emails to people, or you can use it with a service like Mailchimp, which enables you to send you know, really nicely formatted and very visually rich emails to people uh, on your mailing list. Some of you might be thinking, well, you know, hang on, we've already got a Facebook page, you know, we've got a Twitter account, we've got Instagram, you know, people can engage with us that way, you know, we can kind of reach out to them as well. And so I guess the one, the one comment I'd make on that is that, you know, when you use social media, you need to ask yourself the question, who owns the customer? And in all of those instances, the answer is not you. So Facebook, um, you know, they give you a platform with which to kind of reach your customers, but um, their business model means that they want you to pay to do that. So um, there's so much competition for, you know, space in people's feeds now on Facebook that um, basically uh, about 1% of what is posted online actually make it, makes it through to people. The same with Twitter. Um, you know, a tweet has a half life of about six seconds now, and so it's a really inefficient method for you know keeping uh, your customers up to date with what's happening and trying to communicate with them. And so, for this reason, you know, having that data yourself, you know, their name and their email address is so valuable. And so, everything you do should be built around you know obtaining that information. So how can you use the data? Um, well, it's really going to depend on your audience, who they are, um, what they have access to, sort of in technology terms, uh, and also the outcome that you're seeking to obtain with them. So certainly the, the cheapest options, uh, the easiest options are going to be digital. So generally email-based, um, personal emails, newsletters, and that kind of thing. Other options are going to be if you want to do something offline with them, um, sending them a hard copy newsletter or personalized you know, mail of some sort, then um, that's an option. Something that I've used effectively recently is uh, text messaging. Um, so making sure that we obtain a mobile number from the students and graduates that we're supporting um, whenever they sign up to events, then you know, sending out um, personal text messages you know, using software which can send a number of messages at one time to engage with people that way and so that's often effective you know because email people receive so much email that it's finding a different approach to kind of cut through that and so that may be one option that you want to explore finally um, obviously it's pretty um, time intensive but voice calling um, if you've got that information you can sort of engage with customers in a very direct and very personal way if that's appropriate So we're quite close to the end now, but it's brought us to this concept of consent. Um, now, but this is a really important, uh, really important aspect of sort of collecting and using personal information from people. So, the golden rule here is really, you know, you need to tell people up front, you know, if you're collecting their their data, what you're going to do with it, and to make sure they're comfortable with that. And so. If you're going to take their data and put them on your mailing list, then they need to be happy with that. Likewise, if you want to you know, take their personal information or their telephone number so you can telephone them, again, they need to be happy with receiving telephone calls from you. So again, the golden rule is just tell people up front why you're collecting their data and what you're going to do with it. One last important slide, and um, this is on data protection. And so 
basically um, personal data is, is valuable and it's uh, protected as such by legislation in many jurisdictions. So in the UK, the relevant legislation is called the Data Protection Act. And basically it says, uh, prescribes, you know, how you need to store data and how you need to handle it if you're going to collect it. Likewise, in Australia, there's corresponding legislation. And so I'd encourage you to kind of do a bit of searching around online just to um, ascertain what the relevant legislation is in, you know, your part of the world and to make sure that you under understand, you know, what the obligations on you are if you're going to collect this information from people. And finally, uh, I've listed some resources here which you can go and check out. Um, the first two are online form builders. They're both super straightforward to use. Uh, one is Wufu, the other one is Typeform. Um, again, they both build online forms. Typeform is a bit more playful, a bit more visual. Um, Wufu is a bit more kind of probably powerful depending on what you want to do, but I'd encourage you to have a look at both of them. Uh, finally, the last link there is MailChimp. Some of you might have seen this already. I'm going to be doing a, uh, a separate video on this in the coming weeks uh, to walk through exactly how you can use this service with your email marketing and building really beautiful looking email letters, newsletters that can go out online. And that brings us to the end of Customer Data 101. Thanks for listening and I'll speak to you again soon.